Hey everybody, this is Mr. Hamblin. We are going to work on the Pocahontas lecture today, but we're also going to be working on sourcing. So we're going to go over the seven skills that it takes to source a primary source. And we're going to be focusing on those Pocahontas topics that we discussed earlier in class. So I'm going to grab my pen here. And just to remind you guys, sometimes I'll be looking at the camera, sometimes I'll be looking at the source. So don't be distracted by me too much. Be focusing on the source. Now, we have something called a true relation by John Smith. And if we remember right, the guy named John Smith, if you remember from the uh, movie Pocahontas, the Disney movie, um, he was the guy who Pocahontas falls in love with. Now, John Smith was a true person. He was a real person. He came to the Americas to explore, and he kept a journal. And in this case, he's calling this uh, entry, at least, or maybe even the journal, a true relation. And so you notice that we have these two lines right here of source information. And whenever you're sourcing something, honestly, you might only need to look at those two lines, at least for the first few uh, skills. So we're looking at the lines. We're going to go ahead and read them real fast. It says, in Smith's own words, from a true relation of such occurrences and accidents of note as have happened in Virginia since the first planting of that colony, published in 1608. So it kind of sounds like he uh, published his journal. It sounds like these are something that he actually shared with people. He might have been willing to do that, or he might have had intentions to do it first. Um, we do need to look at our skills, though. Let's go ahead and look at number one. Number one is identify the category of source. So first we need to figure out what kind of source this is. And there's a lot of different kinds it could be. But it's pretty obvious just from the title information that this is something that Smith wrote himself. It doesn't really look like a letter. Um, kind of just skimming through it real fast. It looks like he's basically writing what was happening during those moments. He even says the occurrences and the accents of note. So most likely this is a journal or a diary. So I'll write JD up here just to remind you guys. So it's probably a journal or a diary. Um, it is a very short, brief mention. It's not the entire diary, obviously. But from these three paragraphs that I'm looking at so far, it definitely does look like that. Uh, number two, real quick, identify the date and creator of the source. Looking at the date and creator, uh, it's pretty obvious as far as it being from John Smith. His, name's all, his name is on it, after all. And the date, it says right here, published in 1608. So we know it's in 1608. And even more important, we see right here on the first line of the actual source it says arriving at where i'm gonna have a hard time saying this word where moco moco on or about 5th of january 1608 so he wrote this around the same time that he published it which is really good news it means that the source is going to be very accurate because he wrote it so recently so we know it's 1608 that's good we know it's smith going down to number three identify if the source is primary or secondary I think I've already called it a primary source, so we're just going to put a P right here. Um, it is a primary source because it was written by John Smith during that time period. He's writing about what he saw, what occurred in the accidents of note. So since it's his perspective and his words, it's a primary source. Okay, that one's pretty easy. Uh, number four, describe the audience of the source. This is where it gets a little bit tougher. Who is this for? Who do you write a journal or a diary for? You write it for yourself. You might write it because you just want to think about the day. You might want to write it to remember something in the future. But the point is, you write it for yourself. Now, it's interesting, though, because John Smith published his diary or journal, which means that he made it viewable to the public. Maybe he always knew he was going to do this. So we have to ask ourselves, is his audience himself or is it a bigger public? And we really don't know. There's like some things that we could probably do to figure it out. But just with this source, it's hard to tell. So if you wrote down that the diary is for himself, that would be fine. But if you also notice that he published it, you could actually say maybe he wanted other people to see these things in order for them to come to the colonies. So it could be public. It could be not. Um, going down to number five, describe the purpose of the source. This kind of goes along to the audience. What is this actual thing for? And this is kind of where we're going to have to start reading the source to figure things out. What does he mention? What words does he use? Is he focusing on specific topics? In the introduction material, he says that his writing is a true relation of occurrences and accidents. So he's talking about things that actually happen. The people might be interested in knowing what's going on in this Virginia area because they might want to come there to settle. So let's start reading a few of these lines. 
Um, so again, arriving at Tawara Mokomoko on about the 5th of January, 1608, their emperor proudly laying upon a bedstead a foot high upon 10 or 12 mats, richly hung with many chains of great pearls about his neck. So automatically he's talking about something about jewelry. He's using very uh, good adjectives as far as describing what he sees. Um, he's talking about being covered with something too. I'm not really sure what that word means. Um, he talks about there being women there uh, sitting upon him uh, on each side of the chief. Uh, see, there was chief men on each side of the fire, ten in ranks. There's a lot of people in this tent or at this moment. Um, there's many young women. There are great chains of white beads. Again, he's noticing the jewelry upon them. Um, and on the hands, they're painted red. They uh, look very grave but majestic. And he has, and the, uh, Smith believes that he has a lot of admiration for them. And he's the word savage. So a lot of these words I'm noticing, um, he actually is using words that describe these people on a positive note, the word admiration and majestic. So he's seeing these people as probably peaceful. If we keep on going down, we might notice some more things. Uh, he was welcomed with kind words and great patterns of sundry victuals, uh, assuring me his friendship. So the chief is assuring Smith of his friendship and that he's going to give him liberty or freedom within four days. He demanded uh, why we went further in the boat. So the chief is curious why Smith wants to travel. And he wants to trade, it looks like. He's asking for corn, venison, things to feed us. And the chief wants hatchets and copper. That's interesting. So Smith is talking about trade now. He's talking about food, what's available there. And he's also talking about what the Native American chief wants. In return, the chief wants a tool, a hatchet, and he wants metal, copper, which could also be turned into other tools. So as far as number five, describe the purpose of the source, it seems to me that the purpose is Smith's trying to make notes of things that other settlers would want to know. They want to know how peaceful are the native people. They want to know what the people are interested in trading with, what the people have to trade. Um, here he even notes that the chief is talking about uh, going further on the boat, and Smith makes it seem like the chief is fine with it. So these are all things that other people in England or other colonists would want to know. Uh, continuing to go down, we have this request I promised to perform, and thus having with all the kindness he could devise sought to content me, he sent me home with four men, one that usually carried my gown and knapsack for me, two other loaded with bread and one to accompany me. So these are friendly native people. So Smith is trying to show that these people are friendly and willing to trade. So I would say that's the purpose of the source. He's trying to show people that this is a good area to settle because there is going to be food. There's going to be uh, Native American people who are friendly and are willing to trade with them. So let's go on to number five. Let's go on to number six before we run out of time. Uh, number six is described characteristics or bias as perspectives of the source creator. So this is where it starts getting really tough. We need to start figuring out more things about who Smith is. What is he there for? Who is he? Um, we can get into very basic things, and so I'm going to write on the left side of my screen real fast these things. I'm going to write gender. I'm going to write religion. I'm going to write, what else can we do? We're going to write, uh, we're going to do this culture. And so we can kind of figure out basic things about Smith. Like next to gender, we can write that he's a man. His religion is most likely Christian, even though we don't 100%. He didn't like actually say he's a Christian, but because he's from England, we can pretty much assume it. Um, his culture, he is from England. We knew that. And that's kind of just giving us a base idea of who he is as far as his general characteristics. Now, as far as what he wants, like what is his bias, he clearly wants to trade. He clearly wants to settle the area. And so you can tell throughout the reading that he really is interested because of how much he mentions uh, the, uh, the friendliness of the Native American people, what they want to trade, and just a lot of the other words too, like the fact that he uses positive words like majestic and admiration. Uh, so those earlier words that we noted. So these are all things that make us kind of realize that Smith has a bias of being a person that wants to trade. That's his perspective. That's his goal. Okay. So any of those things would work. Um, those are the first six skills. This uh, video is about to end about 20 seconds. And so we're going to stop here and we're going to explore the seventh skill in the next video. Thanks.